G'day guys, Dane here. Welcome back to Clarkie's NRL show. Today we're joined by Newcastle Knights Young Gun and their most recent debutant. We've got Phoenix Crossland on the phone. Phoenix, Phoenix, how you going? Good mate, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. Combined your names there. Now, uh, I suppose the first question that everyone wants to know is, um, how was the NRL debut? Mate, it was a, um, uh, a dream come true. Mm. It sounds, um, it's cliche to say it, obviously, but you know, every, every kid that plays footy at the age of six or seven, whenever they start playing, um, was to play in NRL, and I got to do that at a pretty young age of 18, and um, no, I'm really grateful for it. Absolutely. I wanted to sort of ask in the lead-up with the week, Phoenix, uh, how did you find out sort of, um, because I believe you were in Blues 20s camp at the time, so a little bit of a weird one there, and what were the emotions like when you first got told all the way leading up to actually jumping on the field there? <clears throat> um, yeah, it was pretty strange. Had me, um, had me bags packed at home. I was going to go down to the um, the camp um, two days before, um, two days after, Brownie sort of said he um there was sort of um you know Mitchell Pierce got caught into Origin and then mm. um there was a bit of like a bit of noise around around the boys saying oh fair now you might um you might get a run here but I didn't really think too much of it and then um Brownie sort of when we got on the field Brownie, Brownie put us all together and he said um um there's a, there's a spot left on the bench and we're going to give it to Phoenix because he's he's been competing the hardest down at um Canterbury Cup so that was a good little reward for the hard work I've been putting in. I can only imagine that was a very special moment. And your career, even though at a young age, is already built on sacrifices, Phoenix. You missed out on playing 20s for the Blues. And correct me if I'm wrong here, but you were selected for the Australian schoolboys side, but you missed out to do a pre-season with the first grade Knights. Am I correct in saying that? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't make the um, Australian schoolboys. I, I missed out on the New South Wales CHS because um, I just didn't get picked. But Okay. Um, Obviously, if I if I was um, privileged enough to make the Aussie schoolboys, I probably would have picked the preseason anyway because that would have mm. probably given me a bit more of a better chance to to um, debut this year. And now I do have it um, on good authority that throughout this preseason, um, I suppose quote unquote, you were having some private sessions um, with Mitchell Pearce. He was taking you and some of the younger boys and working on your kicking drills. Um, I'm also correct in saying that. And sort of what were some of the big takeaways um, you got from that experience? <coughs> Yeah, Pearson's a legend. He's sort of um, he's probably taken it a bit of a challenge this year as well to to get around the younger boys. Mm. Um, he's got he's really helped me out, and yeah, he's he's done a few sessions. We've gone um done a, done some kicking, and we've gone and seen some uh some people that have that have helped him when he's growing up as well. So um yeah, all preseason and even like even like day to day sort of footy, he's always he's always getting around me, sort of um trying to help me out wherever he can. He's um. He's obviously been through a lot as well, so he's got a lot of a lot of things to teach me, and um, no, he's a legend. He does have a lot to teach. He has been through a lot, like you said, also, and I think looking from the outside in, he has really stepped up into that leadership role since being um, named the captain. I wanted to just go back to the debut uh, for one more time, if I could, Phoenix. I wanted to ask, did any of your coaches or teammates have any sort of specific words for you after the game, or is there a particular <coughs> moment that you'll remember for the rest of your life? Anything like that? Probably, mate. Um, the reason, I mean, the reason I sort of got the debut um, was just the, the way I've been competing um, yep. down at Canterbury Cup, and that's sort of that's probably what what meant the most to me is because I put a lot of hard work into um, where I am today. You know, I haven't I haven't done much in the game, but where I am today as a as a young bloke, I've I've played NRL, played um, New South Wales Origin, so. And I've all I've based that all around working hard and competing in every single every single game I played. So, I mean, to know that I debuted on the back of that, which which is um pretty cool. That's that's probably what meant um, meant most to me. Certainly a good attribute to base your game on. You spoke about the New South Wales Canterbury <coughs> Cup there. I wanted to sort of ask, how do you feel that competition prepared you for your NRL debut? Because you have played majority of a football in the uh, reserve grade this year and, and also some of the main differences between the two competitions um yeah at the start of the year it was, it was different I've never um before round one of Canterbury Cup this year I'd never versed men or mm. or played at that sort of level before so it was it was really different at the start of the year um there's obviously a lot of a lot of great players in the Canterbury Cup competition I versed Kane Evans and um the um the Magpies had a, a, a good player Josh Reynolds yep. um you know they've they've both done a lot in the game. So um, the the differences between uh, reserve grade and NRL is obviously just the speed of it, really. Okay. The, um, speed. the first the first three minutes of when I played NRL, I was gassed and I didn't even touch the footy. So okay. Um, 
that yeah, it was probably the biggest the biggest difference. But physically, it's it's not much different because, as I said, they they all like reserve grade and NRL. They all sort of they, they train together and they do gym together. So they're sort of, I mean, they're sort of in, on the same program. So they sort of, um, you know, phys- physically it was all right. Yeah, and you looked super confident out there for the 15 or so that we did see you, Phoenix. I wanted to ask, are you naturally a leader, naturally a big talker on the field, or did you just have a lot of pent-up sort of nerves and anxious energy and you just sort of let it all out, or was that just your natural game plan? Um, it was probably a bit of both. I was, okay. <laughs> I've never sort of started a game on the bench. So I was, it was a lot of nerves, but a lot of um, excitement to get out there. And obviously what comes with playing halfback is you need to be a leader, whether you're a big talker off the field or um, not a big talker off the field. When you're on the field, you've got to talk and you've got to show confidence. Otherwise, it'll rub off on the on the other boys in your team. So I mm-hmm. think when I was out there and sort of in a tricky position, um, I think we'll, we were only up by two points um, when I came on. So I sort of had to show a bit of confidence that I could get the win for the boys. So um, that's sort of that's what I wanted to go out there and do. You did show a lot of confidence. Also, I, I remember specifically you demanded the ball and put in a nice kick um, over the sideline to buy a little bit of a break for your team. Um, and yeah, just very confident. That was the biggest thing I took from your debut. But I wanted to ask Phoenix, you are in a unique position here. And sort of the only thing I can really compare it to is the Smiths at the Storm. Cameron Smith and Brandon. You are a halfback. Your captain and one of the best halfbacks of this generation, Mitchell Pierce, is at the club. Obviously, being stuck behind him, I've got to ask Phoenix, do you look at this as a chance to sort of bide your time learn and become a better first grader or do you think this could have potentially affect you signing elsewhere um with another rival club i think definitely it's um it's a great challenge you know pierce is obviously um one of the one of the really good halfbacks of this generation you know he's done a lot in the game he's played origin he's now won an origin series so yeah there's not much he hasn't really done um so i don't see it as as a, a bad thing you mm-hmm. know i get to go to training and and Train with one of the best halfbacks in Australia, so um, I wouldn't say I'm stuck behind him. I'm definitely going to try and work hard to, you know, get get some more NRL games in me. But you know, he's, I'm not complaining that I'm I'm going to training every day with Mitchell Pearce and and working with him and on the same side as him. You definitely got the right attitude then, and that's actually really um, pleasing to hear from you. And I wanted to ask um, one more question, sort of on the NRL. Does that utility bench role interest you? Obviously, Kurt Mann, Connor Watson at the club, you do have some good utilities there. Do you see yourself um, playing naturally at another position, or do you feel your best game is as that dominant half? Um, well, my my preferred position, as you as you know, is being the halfback or five mm-hmm. eight. I don't mind um, either or, but I've been doing a little bit of work with Rory Cost Jason, playing a bit of um, bit of hooker. Um, okay. Sort of the, the passing comes naturally to me, um, so that's sort of something that I can. I can sort of base my game around if I did play hooker, and I don't mind defending either. You know, I get my body in front. So, um, yeah, like as you said, mutual Pierce is there. So if there's a different avenue for me to get into the team, I'm obviously going to try and take it with both hands. But um, yeah, you've done a lot of work under Mitchell Pierce, Phoenix. I've got to ask: Does working closely with Danny Levi interest you to potentially progress those um, skills at dummy half? Yeah, of course. I'll. Mm. There's, we've got a great team here at Newcastle, so um, I try and learn off everyone. I'm even trying to learn off some of the some of the blokes that I'm furthest away from their position. You know? Even t- Timmy Glasby, I try and learn a lot from him about leadership and, and mentality towards rugby league. So, mm-hmm. um, of course, I'm, I'm open to learn off anyone, and if it's to play hooker, obviously I'm going to try and learn a bit off Danny as well. Absolutely. And final question for me, Phoenix, before I let you go. Where do you set your focus to for the rest of 2019? Is it around getting that Canterbury Cup side into the top eight or do you focus on breaking into that NRL side consistently? What's something you're hoping at the end of this year you can look back on and be proud that you accomplished? Um, Yeah, obviously I want to try and... My focus is at Canterbury Cup. I've played most of the year here, so that's sort of, I guess, my, my team at the moment. That's sort of the team I try and own. Mm-hmm. So if I could get them to a finals series this year, that's probably one of my biggest goals. But obviously, if um, if Brownie says uh, Femi needs you to play first grade, I'm not going to deny that. So I guess that's another sort of individual goal to try and get another crack at NRL. But um, if that doesn't happen, I know I'm going to put my hand up again in pre-season and, and show them what i got. Absolutely. Well, speaking to you tonight, man, I can see that you have such a great work ethic, a great attitude towards your footy. And I really do think you'll go far in your career. All the best for us of 2019, and thanks so much for joining us on the Clarkies NRL show, man. Cheers, Clarkie. means a lot, mate.